What's going on, Leafs Nation? Mike and Dave here of Locked On Leafs. An interesting article came out in The Athletic today talking about how the Blackhawks could solve the Peter Mrazek problem for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So Dave and I are going to uh, explain what they're talking about, give our own thoughts on it, and maybe a couple of other teams that could help out along the way. That's what's in store on today's edition of Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al Leather on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me is my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast. Uh, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. And you can also now catch us on YouTube through video format. We've reached our goal of a thousand subscribers and it has enacted the giveaway of our Austin Matthews Leafs jersey. Um, I've got it in hand. We'll be giving it away. We're going to um, give out the details of how we're going to do the giveaway next week. So make sure that you're listening, uh, and, you know, subscribe so that you keep coming back. Each and every day, Monday to Friday, brand new content for you. All right, so we are going to continue doing the uh, the athletics fan survey that we started doing in yesterday's show. We got about halfway through it. We'll continue to do the next half um, a little bit later on. But I don't know if you read this piece, Dave, um, but there was uh, an article in The Athletic that talked about, uh, it was entitled, can the Blackhawks solve the Maple Leafs' Peter Mrazek problem? So, obviously, we know what the problem is. It, it, there's two more years left of Peter Mrazek at $3.8 million. He ain't worth that. Definitely not worth that. Um, he, he wasn't able to stay healthy. He wasn't good when he was in net. So, for many, many reasons, the Maple Leafs kind of need to get him off the books, especially since you, you need to go out and sign a new goaltender with Jack Campbell most likely moving on, and you're going to need that cap space to probably sign somebody half decent. So, um, Jonas Siegel of Toronto's uh, chapter of The Athletic and Chicago's Scott Powers wrote a pretty good article linking the Leafs and Hawks together in a mutually beneficial trade that would see Morazic go to Chicago and the Leafs alleviate that cap space over the next two years. Um, I guess before we get into this trade, did you have a chance to, to read it and what were your, or your thoughts on it? I thought, I thought it was quite interesting just because, you know, the first thing you have to figure out when you're trying to move a contract like Peter Morazic is – that's a hefty cap hit, which team can actually absorb it and would be willing to take the full hit, right? Some teams might say, oh, we'll take Peter Mrazek off your hands, but you're going to have to take some of that money back. Like, this is a situation where the Leafs are probably like, we do not want to take any money back. Like, the Leafs have done enough of that with other deals. I mean, the Phil Kessel one still rings true. We finally got that one off the books. I don't think the Leafs want to be taken on. Another one. Yeah, it's only two years left, but the Leafs are already cap struck, like cap tight as it is. Every dollar that they can save is valuable. So, yeah, I thought it was when I saw the idea and we brought up, you know, potentially moving Mrazic to the Blackhawks. So that's why I found this to be quite interesting because we talked about this before and it's almost yeah. like the wheels were <laughs> are kind of set in motion. And I think the most interesting part of the article is we know what happened with Kyle Davis and Kyle Dubas at the trade deadline. Great theater where we had two GMs who were kind of duking it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but apparently the hatchet's been buried. And that's yeah. hard. that's key. Well, yeah, I think I think it, it, you got to be pros. You got to move past it. It's I mean, how long did uh, did Edmonton and Anaheim go without making a deal? Brian Burke wanted to 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 fight. Who was the GM at the time in Edmonton? 
Oh, uh, who was it? He was he's like a former Oiler player. He's there forever. He was there when they drafted like Yakupov and Taylor Hall and all that. But he signed Dustin Penner to that offer sheet, and he legitimately didn't make a trade or talk to this GM in months, like or in years. Literally didn't talk to him for years. He was so pissed off that he signed Dustin Penner to a to an offer sheet. Yeah, it was kind of <laughs> so that was another situation that went south. But eventually they buried the hatchet. And I always remember that. So I remember when I heard this this situation between Kyle Dubas and Kyle Davidson, I thought back to the uh, to the that situation with good old Berkey. But yeah, look, good thing seems like that they buried the hatchet on that one. Um, I guess let's go through like why they each team it makes sense for each team. So for Toronto, I think it makes a lot of sense because for the reasons that we mentioned. $3.8 million for a guy who could barely stay healthy. And when he was on the ice, wasn't very good. And they desperately need to cap space. It's pretty cut and dry for why Toronto wants to make a deal and why Toronto would uh, would very much like to send Peter Mrazic the other way. Chicago, um, they're, they're more of a question mark, right? Like, why would they want to bring in a Peter Mrazic? Well, First of all, they do not have a goaltender, an NHL goaltender, signed next year. Both Kevin Lankanen and Colin Delia, both pending UFAs, unsure what they're going to do with them. But Peter Morazic is an NHL caliber goaltender at the very least. You could bring him in for two years. They are a team that does that is going into a rebuild. They've come out and they've said it. They're yeah. listening on on anyone um, who who they want. They're listening literally on everybody, even um, Patrick Kane, Taze. You know, all of the players, it's kind of wild. Seth Jones, who just signed, he gave the massive contract to. He can pick up the phone. They'll listen on him, too. So they're willing to make some deals. They're going into a rebuild. So it's not like they need a stud goaltender, but they probably at least want somebody who you can claim to be an NHL quality goalie, and that's what Peter Mrazic is. And they've been willing to eat cap space and bring on caps for assets and picks to help out with that rebuild. So that's what it comes down to. They would be willing to make this deal because a, they need a goalie B they're not competitive. So the cap space um, that it takes to bring on Morazic doesn't really mean as much to them as it does to Toronto. And by taking on this player, they can also fish and farm um, assets, whether it's a pick or a prospect, but Dave, what, what comfort level would you have as far as, how expensive of an asset you would be willing to give up for someone to take Peter Mrazek's contract off our hands. Well, we have to think about what assets do Leafs currently have, right? If we're looking at this year's draft, sure, some people are going to say the Leafs got that first round pick. That ain't happening. The no. Leafs have unloaded contracts with first round picks. The Patrick Marlowe one, we already know how that bounced back against the Leafs. That's just not going to happen. They have a third round pick like the Leafs just don't have that many picks in this draft. I think they're going to try to keep as many of those as they can. Right. I'm not a fan of trading your picks to move out contracts. Um, Obviously, yes, you have to give something in order to get something. I do get that. They could even move, you know, one of their later round picks or do some sort of like pick swap. If there's a pick that Chicago likes, that's a little bit higher. They could t- potentially do that. Um, but I'm looking at what prospects the Leafs could potentially move, right? Um, I think in the article they mentioned Nick Abruzzese. Um, that's a tough one because we just haven't seen this guy play enough to really determine whether this is someone you are willing to part with. So I can't say, yeah, they should definitely do it. I, I'm not going to be like, I know he's got to be untouchable. It's like one of those gray area ones. Yeah, uh, it's got to make sense for them, right? Like, I think if I – I would assume that they would be asking for at minimum a B-level prospect, though, which Abruzzese would probably fit that mold as like a B-level prospect. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, they have other B-level prospects too, maybe other or even guys that – you know, maybe the Blackhawks are looking for someone a little bit younger, too, because Abuzeze is a little bit older. I'm just trying to find. He is 20. He's 22, no? 22? He's 23. 23. So he's on the older side, right? He's not. 
twenty three is old in terms of prospect, right? They might say, "Give us someone that's you know closer to twenty than twenty three. So maybe like a Rony Irvinen. Yeah, like a, a, a him. You look. At. I would say I would here. I think it might be easier to talk mm-hmm. about maybe the prospects that are untouchables. Yeah, as yeah. opposed to trying to go through you know the B's and C's and sorting that out. I would say Sandy and Lilligren are untouchable. You're not going to move the in terms of mm-hmm. using it as an asset to tag along with Peter Morazic. You're not going to pay one of those guys to move that contract. So Sandy and Lilligren for sure. Um, Rody and Amirov. It's it's tragic what what's going on with him. He's fighting the good fight, um, obviously, but you're not going to trade him either. Um, so that he's also off limits. And Matthew Nice is also off limits. Is there another prospect? I would probably Topi Nimala also. Yeah, I was going to say Topi Nimala would be another one. Somebody would I- say Miko Kalkinen. A lot yeah. of people like him. Okay, okay. Um, outside of those guys, I would probably be okay, though, with uh, with attaching any other prospect that I didn't just name in order to alleviate that cap space because I think that would be worth it. If you want to try and like, – if they ask for a Nyes or a Nimala – um, or they ask for a, a Lilligren, it's just not worth it, I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, they, get, they would not. have to give someone that can help the Leafs now, right? They would have to add yeah. to a pack like that package. Let me tell you guys about Athletic Greens because this partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking uh AG1 because, well, I just wanted to get healthier, you know, I had a, a pretty unhealthy lifestyle and I thought. This will help me get back on track. Now, I've been on this thing for a few weeks now, and, and I absolutely love it. I It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to drinking each and every morning. So what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things. Uh, Why do I use this stuff? Honestly, because I feel like it really gets me going. I have so much more energy throughout the day. It it truly does help. And you want to know all about the, the health facts of AG1? It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, uh, dairy free or gluten free contains less than one gram of sugar. There's no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, artificial, anything while still tasting good. It costs you less than three dollars a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habits. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all in one nutritional insurance athletic greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover cost him about a hundred bucks a day he created athletic greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on his own athletic greens has over seven thousand five star reviews recommended by professional athletes recommended by both Dave and I, trusted by leading health officials such as Tim Ferriss and Michael Gervais. Uh, To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Yeah, it, 100%. And just if you're looking, talking, if we're talking just straight up, just trading Morazic and what it will cost to move that contract out. I mean, you can make a bigger deal, which could include them. I think we brought this up because I had brought up Connor, um, Connor Murphy as a, as a yeah. potential trade option. And it was like Connor Murphy for Sandine and Morazic. So it was like, okay, you're getting a top four defenseman, but you're also giving up a a quality defensive prospect, but it's hindered. The value is hindered a little bit because you're also making them take on Peter Morazic. And that's kind of how I had that trade equal. But if we're not talking about bringing in something back and we're just talking about what type of asset would you have to pay for Morazic? Um, I would say like a Irvin SDA 
possibly. I'd be okay with Abruzzese. Um, those are that's probably the tier that they'd be looking at in terms of a B level prospect. Because uh, you're right, I think age would also they want someone who's a little bit younger. Like Alex Steves might be like him and Abruzzese are right on that cusp of like there's still a couple of years for them to develop, but they're almost kind of out there at that age of approaching 25 26 right at 23 years old yeah. so potentially you're looking more of a hirvanen or an sda maybe they do ask for amiko kokanen we'll see what ends up happening there um but the other option is to buy out Morazic, right if you don't want to give up a prospect you could buy him out uh but it's going to cost you for the next four years because there's two years left on that deal so you would have a cap savings of about $2.7 million next year, $2.9 million the year after that, but then it's going to cost you $1.4 million the following two seasons in a way that we've seen Phil Kessel's deal stay on the books as dead cap money. So that's the what you need to weigh. What is more to you, a guy like Abruzzese or a guy like Irvinen Kokanen, or would you rather keep that prospect, but that cap space is still going to be on the books? For the next four years, I'm I'm just not a fan. Like the window is now, right? You're. I'd rather take the option of you're you're trying to do what's best for the team now versus okay, you might give up on a prospect that could potentially turn into something one day. You kind of have to live with that because you know prospects prospects can be boom or bust. We just you just don't know. There's a lot of unknowns with that. But then watch Abruzzese turn into Carter Verhage or turn into a Mason. Obviously not Mason Marcher in terms of his size, but in terms of production. And yeah. we sit here and we curse him for making the deal three years down the road. I know, you know it's gonna happen. You know it's gonna happen. This is very true. Um, <laughs> but I think I, it's I, worth it's worth the gamble. Yeah, I think so. I I mean, the buyout option isn't terrible, Elisa, and you know you can. Maybe this is where the Leafs can kind of tell a team, look, if we're not going to get the deal that we think is satisfactory, we'll just buy the guy out. Like Exactly. Like if not- they want Lilligren or Nimala or like one of those A-level prospects that we set are off limits, if that's the ask, then you buy them out instead. Yeah. But if they're okay with taking on one of these B, you know, C plus level prospects in a return, uh, uh, Justin Hall was also noted as a potential re- return piece. If they wanted another NHL body, um, a veteran type of body to, to go the other way, he was also named in the piece uh, that was on the athletic by Jonas Siegel and Scott Powers. So potentially that is another avenue that you could go, uh, go down if you're Toronto, but ultimately, um, I think it's a good fit. It, like it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like Chicago, they need a goalie. They the cap space doesn't matter to them. Like the high cap hit doesn't matter to them. And I think that it would work. And he's look, he's been a decent goalie when healthy, and just hope that he can stay healthy if you're Chicago. But he's also not going to steal the show in a way where you know a rebuilding team is not going to win you a, a whole bunch of games and you know cost you high draft status. Yeah, I I think that's I think that's the benefit of doing something like this where you know, I I just think the Leafs are in a better position to make this move now than even during the right like during the season we kind of heard that teams were interested in Morazic at one point. All right folks, we're going to continue this conversation, but before we get too far ahead and talking about what other teams that Peter Morazic could potentially go to, let me talk to you about our good friends over at Built Bar. Don't you just love a chewy chocolatey brownie? What about a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? Mm, so good. What if I told you could have all that chewy chocolatey deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? You're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at built.com right now. You got to act fast because they're a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. These are even better than dessert. Plus, the macros are unreal. 130 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only 4 grams of sugar. I'd replace a regular brownie with built caramel brownie bars in a heartbeat. The best part, caramel brownies are covered in 100% real chocolate. Like, 
for real, guys. We've been talking about this for a while. 100% real chocolate. With Built, with Built, you do not have to sacrifice taste for healthy. You can have both. And all Built Bars are made with collagen proteins, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. With Built, taste is the new healthy. Go to Built.com to get your box of caramel brownie bars now. And to sweeten the pot a little bit, but not too much because Built Bars are 4 grams of sugar, use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. So that is promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off at Built.com. They're, they were, I don't know why I, the Leafs didn't consider that. Yeah. <laughs> like, just bite the bullet if someone was willing to give you something. Like, please, thank you. Bye. Yeah, th- those are the teams that Kyle's got to call first, right? We, we didn't know. We don't know who those teams were. The report didn't name drop any actual teams, but that there was interest. Well, if there's still interest of any kind, Kyle's got to circle back and be like, hey, I know you mentioned this back in – you know, January, you still have any interest here? Let's maybe we can think of something a little sweetener uh, to, to, to make it happen. If you still like this guy. Yeah, we'll see another uh, three other teams that I saw. And then we're going to wrap it up and, and move on to the, the athletic survey. Three other teams that I saw that would make some sense uh, in terms of rebuilding. The cap hit won't matter to them. And they could definitely use prospects and a goaltender uh the arizona coyotes one team they're always there the philadelphia flyers i think this team's gonna take a step back and go into a rebuild get someone in behind carter hart um i I think that could work out and they could get themselves a, a pick or a prospect to go in there and and just make sense for them to get some more assets to to bring in another goaltender and then the seattle kraken for a couple of reasons. One, they are also a team that's brand new. They have no pipeline and they could use picks and prospects desperately. They have cap space, a lot of it, and they have a recently uh, vacated goaltending position for the next nine months because Chris Dreger was just diagnosed with a torn ACL and he's going to miss eight to nine months, which will take him into the new year. So, uh, they have a, an opening in net behind Grubauer and potentially a Grubauer Mrazic tandem could be the the route that they go in and they get themselves a prospect or a pick um, to to bring that contract into Seattle. Yeah, I know that they have two goalies signed. Like with, uh, I mean that Grubauer contract. E- yikes! Yeah, um, even Dreger, but he's injured. Um, the three, like maybe, maybe they move out a goalie. I mean, I don't, will the team even want Grubauer? I'm not really sure. No, but like Dreger's out until at least the new year. Like he was given a nine month. Yeah, it's layoff. Pretty gruesome. They, they could, they could definitely, they could definitely make it work. I mean, they're not a team that's looking to compete. I know I heard a report from, I think it was Pierre LeBron that said that they were going to be very aggressive in free agency. Hmm. I'm not too sure that's the way I would go if I was Seattle, but hey, I mean they don't want to just be bottom feeders for you know forever. They do want to. What's their cap situation? They got 22 million in cap, and they only have 21 contracts signed so far. So let's see what they... rosters roster on their signed on their roster. Yeah, so they've got a couple of guys that they need to sign. Uh, Morgan Geeky, they'll probably figure out a deal with. Ryan Donato, they'll probably try and figure out a deal with. Um, outside of that, maybe Daniel Sprong. Do they want to bring back Victor Rast? Does he want to go back? Probably not. Nope. Defensively, Hayden Fleury, yeah, maybe they give him a contract. I'm not so, so sold on that either. And then there's not too much in the pipeline, obviously, just based on the fact that, uh, well, they're a brand new franchise and they don't really have anybody either. So they've got a lot of cap space and only a couple of players to sign and none of them are big boys. So it's not going to cost a whole lot to get these guys re-signed. They'll probably have upwards of 15 to 16, maybe as high as $17 million to go out and spend on either free agents or use it to weaponize cap space to acquire NHL talent. and get assets, picks, and prospects in return, enter Peter Mrazek. 
Yeah, and, and they don't. Yeah, you, I mean, you're bringing up the pipeline. It's very, very bare right now. Like they just don't have that much. So yeah, I think I think you can make it work uh, with Seattle. That's for sure. Um, be interesting. I, I think they'll probably be the lower end on my list. Like I think Chicago definitely number one. Arizona number two, just because Arizona. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see if the Leafs can can finagle that somehow. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see if they can get something done. But I, I thought that it was a really interesting piece and it just made a whole lot of sense. At the end of the day, I think we're both pretty well decided that Peter Morazic has to go, right? Yep. Whether it is through trade um, or through a buyout. Buy, a trade would be would be my preferred option if it takes like a mid-round pick and a prospect. Uh, obviously, I'm not giving up a first or any of those names that we talked about before. If if it takes that to get someone to take them on, then yeah, you, you go to the buyout afterwards. But either way, I'd be surprised if Peter Morazic is a Toronto Maple Leaf come opening night next season. Yeah, very. I would be really surprised too. Yeah as is so i guess we'll kick the we will kick part two of the survey to tomorrow we'll do that one uh tomorrow um so that that'll kind of end the week on the friday show uh but we're gonna end it right here ladies and gentlemen uh th- thank you so much for listening and supporting the show you can subscribe to the locked on these podcasts on all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content follow myself on twitter at making the score connect follow dave at d underscore more Sudi. Well, the show at Lockdown Leafs, go ahead, smash that like button. That'd be much appreciated. Leave a comment down below your thoughts on Peter Morazic and maybe do you have a destination that he could potentially be on the move to? Uh, do you have a deal in mind, a prospect in mind? What's your price? What are you willing to give up in order to get this guy off the books? Uh, let us know in the comment section below. All right, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. Going to finish up the fan survey and Hopefully there's some other Maple Leafs news that breaks throughout the day that we can also get into. So we'll do that tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leafs.